And then Saturday, our watch party. This was an amazing race. I mean, IndyCar has just been fantastic. Uh, the Sonsio Grand Prix in Indianapolis. We saw Alex Blow qualify and pole. Lungard took the lead early, though. Uh, if you watched the podcast last week, uh, Tom picked Polo, I picked Lundgaard, and that was the battle we saw between those two. Uh, uh, Lundgaard got the lead early, was on a little bit uh, different tire strategy, was on the primary tires when Polo was on the alternates. I uh, was able to get a lead, kind of control the early parts of this race. We saw Power uh, cycle towards the front of this race there as well. We had Will Power, Alex Polo, Christian Lundgaard, all three of them putting on a fantastic strategy race unbelievable strategy race every sequence they were you know it's a good race this is jay from the dega boys reminding you to like this video if you're enjoying it so far make sure to hit the subscribe button to see more great content like this don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of all future uploads on this channel thanks for watching now back to the video this is my point here you know it's a damn good race when the camera doesn't leave the lead when it's, the camera is focused on the lead the entire race, you know it's a good race. And that's what we saw. All race long, the camera was focused on Polo, Lundgaard, Power. All running within two seconds of each other the entire race. Uh, through all the pit strategies, we're watching their pit sequences come down pit road, switching from primary. They had to use the alternates. They had to use a pair, uh, used pair of scuffed alternates. And then they had to use their set of primaries as a, as a four-stop race. Uh, we saw just so many different strategies being played out, uh, whether you want to take the scuffed alternates now, whether you want to run the primary. It was just amazing. And and seeing them leapfrog each other through pit sequences and then having to fight back and, and conserving push to pass. And Pelot did the best, I think, out of anybody. It's it just typical number 10 Ganassi team has done amazing the last two years. It just, he Pelot is just on another level. He's an amazing race car driver. Their strategy is amazing. And that's, again, what we saw. Uh, everybody else trying to maintain gap or trying to extend a gap, having to use a lot of push to pass. Blow wasn't having to do that. Blow had more push to pass at the end of this race than anybody and had more pace. Uh, they played stint, stint three is where the race really changed. That's when Blow was really able to take control of this race. They leaped Lundgaard through the pit sequence. Uh, Power kind of got stuck, had some, some lap traffic there through his sequence when it looked like he might be able to leap Lundgaard, wasn't able to make it happen. Uh, but overall, Polo, I mean, just absolutely phenomenal drive. Unbelievable drive there by Polo. What a race. What a race. I mean, no stage cautions, no pop cautions, no debris cautions, no manufactured restart racing, uh, no Jesus stone tires, and look what we get. One of the best races of the weekend. I mean, unbelievable. I think it might have been the best race of the weekend. I'm not going to lie. It was an amazing race, and I'm so thankful that our community voted for it for the watch party unbelievable thank you guys so much <laughs> i enjoyed that dallas jumped on with us uh, me and tom were in here what a what a great time what a great watch party for the month of uh month of may and i can't wait to bring more later this month as well so yeah congratulations to Plo. I, it's the Plo month i'm telling you i can't wait to break down the qualifying here in a little bit at the end of this podcast and give you my front row predictions and maybe a little precursor to the new 500 but wow hello Hello. <laughs> he, he, and uh, after this weekend, the point standings there in IndyCar, Polo it re takes the points lead now. Uh, 12 points ahead of Will Power and 25 points ahead of Scott Dixon. Watch out for Scott Dixon, man. He's already got that win this season. Uh, it's kind of looking like, what did Tom say in the offseason? If, if uh, Will Power going into the Indianapolis 500 is right there within reaching distance of the championship, watch out because he might just end up winning the championship. And I think that's what we're seeing. So, all right, Indianapolis 500 qualifying this weekend. Uh, my front row, and I'm going to stick with this as my front row. Alex Pelot, he will be your pole sitter for this year's Indianapolis 500. It is hello Pelot season. He wins the Grand Prix. I believe he'll win the pole, and I believe he will also win the Indy 500. That's my precursor pick for next week. Uh, but he is going to qualify in pole. Hello is on another level. Hello, hello. I think he's going to win the pole. Uh, front row, Renus BK. Renus BK. Hear me out on this one. He qualified on the front row last year. Uh, every year he's been at the Indy 500, he has made the fast six. And I think if he makes it again to the fast six, he's going to put that thing on the front row. I'll put BK on my front row. And then... You know what? I'm doing it. My final front row nominee here. 
Oh, da, 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 da. Calamila. Oh, man. I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I'm, I think it'd be an Arrow McLaren car. I'm not going to put Larson on there. I think it'll, I feel like that's just kind of be a little bit too unrealistic. Uh, I was thinking maybe Pat Ward. But you know what? I'm sticking with my main man. My main man, Callum Eilat. He wins the World Dirt Championship at Spa. He's going to carry that momentum here into the Indy 500. I, and Rosenquist, I believe, had that six machine on the front row last year. Why can't Callum Eilat do the same? I think he can. So I'm going to do the same front row as last year, below VK and the number six McLaren. But instead of Rosenquist in it, it's going to it's Eilat. That will be your front row for the Indianapolis 500. And then when it comes to who goes home, one unlucky driver is going to be going home. One unlucky team is going to be going home in this year's Indianapolis 500. Could it be Cooter Daly? Could it be Cooter Daly? I don't think so. Dry Ryan Bull puts a lot of effort into the Indianapolis 500, and I believe that him and Ryan Hunter Ray will be fine there out of the uh, I guess it's the Cusick Motorsports, Dry Ryan Bull, whatever you want to say. I think they'll be fine. Uh, but then you look at other people that could potentially miss it. Uh, Pietro Fittipaldi. Hmm. With RL. I don't know how I feel about him. I don't know. We've got uh, Christian Rasmussen. Can he make it into the Indy 500? I don't know. With that uh, Ed Carpenter race machine. That's going to be interesting to watch as well. Uh, and then you look back at Dale Coyne racing with uh, Nolan Siegel, Catherine Lay. One of them not make the Indy 500. Mm, I don't know. And then I guess the last person I'd put on there at my uh, my wonder list, Stingray Rob. Oh, Stingray Rob. Oh, man. I don't know. With AJ Foot Racing. But... I think when it's all said and done, I think the person that does end up going home this year from the Indianapolis 500, the one that does not make the race this weekend, Kyle Larson. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he'll make it. I think it'll be Catherine Legg, the 51 Dale Coin machine. I think that will be the one that doesn't make it. And I don't think it is anything to do with driver ability or talent. I just think Dale Coin is in an interesting predicament here. Uh... It could be Nolan Siegel, too. I don't know. I, th I feel like one of those Dale Coyne cars are going to be going home this weekend and not running in the 108th anniversary of the Indy Finapolis 500. So that's my prediction. I think it'll be one of the Dale Coins, and I think between Nolan Siegel, Catherine Lang, I would probably put Catherine Lang maybe a little bit more at risk than I would Nolan Siegel.